There we go. I think I've got fixed it. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Higher Things Bible Study today. We are continuing in Genesis. And if you were watching on Friday, I plan to work through 10 chapters today just to spoil Pastor Borghart's fun. That's not going to happen. But it'd be, a fun, it'd be funny if it did, if somehow the Spirit put us into a time warp and we were able to cover 10 chapters in one day. Um, to not only steal Pastor Borghart's favorite verse, but also to throw him for a loop as to what he'd actually be teaching tomorrow. But... As it is, we will most likely just cover two chapters, but that's okay. Welcome, all of you. Glad you could be here. Um, so, let's see. Oh, quite a few people. We'll wait a little bit so the Facebook notifications get out into the interwebs, as they say, so that more people will join us. I am... If you're new, Pastor Aaron Fenker, I, I'm i in Kansas. This is my Kansas bunker, my wife's uh, sewing room slash guest room that I overtake to do Bible class. And uh, I also serve as the Dean of Theology for Higher Things. So uh, the, the first thing is, um, we'll see if this works. I'm going to try and post a comment. We'll see if I, if I do this right. So... Um, uh, we have a an announcement today. This is very exciting. So in these um, times, Higher Things is, these COVID times, Higher Things is um, still producing things to be very helpful. We are seeking to equip um, uh, pastors and, and lay teachers uh, in order to help teach confirmation class in these strange times. Uh, so this, uh, what that means is to offer um, a curriculum in, that would help uh, navigate the waters of Zoom, of remote learning or in-person learning to help um, carry through the week or preparing the week before. It, this can be sort of tailored to whatever you need or someone just on your own. If you wanna work through this uh, confirmation curriculum. This is Confirmation 1.0, and we, um, this is it's a free resource. So please consider you know supporting the work of Higher Things if you think this is helpful and fantastic, or just want us to keep heading in this direction. Please consider donating today. Um, I am. I tried posting a, a comment. We'll see if it worked. If not, uh, our content executive is here. It is at higherthings.org slash confirmation class. Link is in the description, so check that out. That's going to be starting here in the next couple weeks. Release date on September 1st and then continuing throughout uh, the remainder of, well, the lessons. So look for that resource. More information there on timing of things and how all that all works out. Um, but yeah, higherthings.org confirmation slash confirmation class for more information on the confirmation curriculum that we are rolling out to help uh, pastors and lay teachers and confirmands um, receive the instruction of the Lord through um, through uh, through the small catechism uh, in these COVID times with varying degrees of in-person learning. So please check that out. Now on to Bible study. Uh, we are in... Um, Genesis chapter 40, that's what I was told we were on. So that's what we are going to cover. Um, and so let's continue. Uh, 40 verse 1. And it, um, after all, after these things happened, um, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt um, committed, they sinned. 
against their their lord, the the king of Egypt, the the chief cupbearer and his baker. Um, they committed a sin. They they committed an offense. They sinned against their king. We're not really told what. All we know is they did something to make Pharaoh angry. And as kings were wont to do in that day, well, to prison you go until the the king determines what to do with you. Uh, because, um, as it says here, Pharaoh was <clears throat> uh, very angry with his two uh, officers um, against the cup, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And he gave them into prison the house of the captain of the guard um, into the house of, of bondage where where, J where Joseph was, the place where Joseph was prison, imprisoned. Yeah, there. So that's how this is important. So Joseph is here with the um, chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Uh, a Joseph, a baker, and a, and a cupbearer. Doesn't have the ring to it. Um, so the captain of the guard, um, he appointed Joseph uh, over them, and he attended them. So he, he kind of ruled over them. Uh, attending them isn't the qu qu quite the right term. Um, he was the one who was put in charge over them. Yeah. So he's sort of watching out for the new prisoners to make sure they behave themselves. Um, and they were, uh, they were there for uh, many days uh, in prison. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Let's keep, let's see here. What do we have? Ooh, yes, dreams. Oh, good. And so what we're going to find out here is that Joseph... Uh, throughout these these narratives here is at one at uh, he's a prophet we see that he ends up being kind of a king um, so he, he's a he's a figure of Christ and and all of this is because um, as Pastor Borker put out uh, is that because God Yahweh loves Judah he's made a promise and so he's going to keep that promise through Judah and so all of this is geared towards that as we'll see um, and another way that this will will have echoes of um, Pentecost as well, but I don't want to dwell too much on that uh, until we get there. But so there's these two things going on at the same time in, in these um, what's someone called the Joseph narratives, um, where Judah and Joseph are, are vying for who is the savior of the people. And um, right now that's Joseph. So Joseph is, is, is kind of working towards that, but, but always through suffering. Um, and that is another way that um, Joseph is a type of Christ. Um, so Joseph is the sa will be the Savior, but through the suffering that he endures um, in, in slavery, in, um, in Potiphar's house, and then in jail. Um, so we'll keep going then. Um, and they both, uh, dreamed a dream, um, a man, a, a, his own dream on one night. Okay. Um, and, uh, there was a court, like an interpretation for each dream, uh, the cupbearer and the baker, which, uh, for the king of Egypt, which were imprisoned in the house of prison. Okay. And Joseph came to them in the morning and he saw that, and he looked at them and be, uh, and behold, they were, oh, troubled. Hmm. And he asked Pharaoh's officers, um, who are in, who were with him, in custody in the house of his Lord. And he said, um, hmm. So he asked him, why are your face downcast today? Or why, why do you have evil faces? That's what it is. Why are your face, like make known to me uh, your evil faces today. 
So their faces are sour faced. They are down, you know, downcast, I guess. Um, they probably, they don't look good. Um, and uh, they said to him, we have dreamed dreams, uh, but there isn't any interpretation for us or no one to interpret them. Yeah. Um, and Joseph said to them, is not uh, are not interpretation gods or are, are God are not interpretations belong to God um, please tell me uh, please tell them to me yeah so they told him chief cupbearer his dream to Joseph and he said um, in my dream behold uh, there was a um, a vine before me like right in my face. That's the way they like to talk about it. And on that uh, vine, there were three twigs or branches. And um, it happened as it budded, its blossoms came up and there were clusters and they ripened uh, into grapes. And the cup of Pharaoh was in my hand. I took uh, the grapes and I pressed them into the cup of Pharaoh I gave the cup into the hand of Pharaoh. Audio troubles today. Is my audio okay, everybody? Can everybody hear me? Audio troubles. Give me just a minute. That is unfortunate. So we've got the, uh, let's see here. Okay. Well, I'm glad. No. Okay. Well, I hope I'm okay. Uh, let me try one last thing here. We'll try it. Let me just. I want to double check one last setting just to make sure I've got it in. Okay. Oh. I hope it's okay. Um. Does anybody? Can anybody confirm if they can hear me? I just need to know. Looks like the connection was going off and on. Hmm. Can you hear me now? I know. I feel like that guy on the. Um... Who was that? Was that Verizon? And that guy's now on Sprint. Oh man! Now we're going back into the old times. Can everybody confirm that they can hear me? Okay. You can clear clearly now. So maybe I fixed whatever I had broken. Huh. All right. Well, good. We'll just keep going. <laughs> we'll upload that video and maybe they can fix it in post. They can always fix it in post, right? Isn't that how that's supposed to go? Anyway, uh, so a cup of Pharaoh. So we're getting a dream here. So the cupbearer... Um, Cup is in his hand, took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Uh, and Joseph said to him, this is its interpretation. The three branches uh, were three days. Sprint T-Mobile together now? Oh, boy, I don't know. That's a good question. That is not my area of expertise. So three days. So... Um, in three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. And you should place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly when you were his cup bearer. And 14. Je but remember me. Um, yes. Remember me. This is this is where Joseph's complaint is is coming out. Remember me when it was well with you, and please do the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh. And so get me out of this house. Show me, please do me, um, do for with, uh, with me chesed, mercy, kindness. Um, here, this is, you know, this would be the sincere love. 
uh, that we have towards one another. Um, this is God's sort of mercy and compassion, steadfast love. Um, do for me steadfast love. Be by my side with steadfast love. It's a very, it's a very um, intimate way of expressing this to the cupbearer. That he needs mercy. The mercy is the only thing that's going to get him out. And here he's telling him why. Uh, because I was surely stolen from the land of the Hebrews. And here also, um, I have done nothing that they should put me into this pit. So into hell. Into the pit. Um, so here this, this is Joseph is suffering and now crying out to someone who can help him. Um, and he, we'll see what comes of it. Um, so this would be, since Joseph, yes, Terry Lynn, this would be a foreshadowing of Jesus in that he suffers. Um, I mean, we all kind of know the end of the story. Um, and Joseph doesn't just plop into Egypt as the savior, as, you know, the white, the, 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 the knight in shining armor or, or what have you. He doesn't just show up as some, um, charlatan in some something like that he shows up in a way where um well you you really wouldn't notice him he's a slave a hebrew slave um the only one who seems to notice him is well potiphar potiphar's wife um the jailer but what is that so what now you're in jail you're worse than a slave you're a slave who's now in jail and you're like the chief prisoner but you're still in the pit. You're still in hell. And so this is the suffering of Christ, that Christ comes as Lord, um, but not in a way, as, as Isaiah puts it, not in an appearance that we would desire him. And that's Joseph. We wouldn't really desire the Joseph type or the Jesus type, but they are the ones chosen by God to save his people. Joseph is, and Jesus is too. Uh, through the pit, through the grave, through hell itself. Um, uh, um, well, Joseph allows God to do it. Um, I mean, sort of, but Joseph doesn't really have a choice here, does he? He's sort of along for the... He was stolen by force. Right, they and this is Jesus too. Um, he's he's kind of I mean yeah Jesus is the one who uh, allows himself to to be to be seized. I mean John tells us that, but Joseph here he's along for the ride. I was stolen out of my house, and I didn't do anything wrong to be put in this pet to be put into hell, because prison back then is not prison like today. It's literally, it literally could be just a hole in the ground. They shove you in. And they feed you, but it, it ain't pretty. It's hell. Um, so let's keep going here. Uh, the chief cupbearer saw that the interpretation was good. That was a good one. Hey, maybe mine will be good too. And he says to Joseph, um, I also had a dream. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, and behold, there were three um, cakes, uh, three cake baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating out of the basket on my head. Okay. I mean, that doesn't seem, I mean, just, just at the outset, doesn't seem like a very good, good outcome in your dream. But, he seems pretty gung-ho about getting a good interpretation. Um, I guess hoping for like a, if life gives you lemons sort of moment, life gives you lemons, maybe make some lemonade, but here we'll find out. Um, and Joseph answers and says, this is the interpretation. Three days are, um, or three uh, baskets are three days. 
in th and it will happen in three days. Uh, Pharaoh will lift up your heads from 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 lift up your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from upon you. Well, isn't that just cheery? So much for a uh, a good a good interpretation. I mean, I guess it's good in the sense that, as we'll find out, it happened. But it's not a really good outcome for the uh, chief baker. Um, not what he was hoping for. Um, even though, from a dream, if you're like, if you're a baker, and uh, if you're a baker and you're like transporting bread, it would be a bad thing. It would be a bad thing if the birds start eating your your uh, your bread. But he's just sort of was like, well, maybe this, maybe it will actually be good. I don't, I don't know. Um, people always hope for the best, I guess. So here we are on the third day. Here I need a drink of water. On the third day, uh, the it was the like the birthday of Pharaoh. It was Pharaoh's birthday. Oh, and he had a party, a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the uh, the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker uh, among his servants. So he brings them back out of prison. And he establishes or, or, or returns, restores uh, the chief cupbearer to his, uh, his cupbearing. And he gave the plate and he placed the cup of Pharaoh into his hand. But he hanged the chief baker as um, Joseph had interpreted to them. But the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. So Joseph is looking for a savior. Um, but he's not the he's not the savior he needs so he's he's looking for um the cupbearer to be like yahweh to him that's sort of the spot he's in um so do steadfast love for me cupbearer egyptian cupbearer as opposed to um have it crying out to yahweh for steadfast love and um which is, uh, what does he remember? I want to just double check. Um, scroll back up. Please do me the kindness. It's it's steadfast love. I just I just want to make this point because the cupbearer is a false savior for Joseph. Only according to God's timing is Joseph rescued, but he in this word choice. He is, he's putting a God word onto, um, onto another person in a cry for help. Um, and, and sometimes this, this, this happens in the, amongst fellow Israelites, which would fit that, that, that would fit that, that Yahweh has, um, shown steadfast love to his people and then they amongst themselves um, are the instrument Yahweh uses to continue to pass that on to his his people and as this is the same move we see in the in the New Testament we love others because he loves us so he loved us and then through us loves others through us or as it is in the post-communion collect to have faith toward God and fervent love toward one another having received the sacrament but Joseph here is doing this to some Egyptian cupbearer. And he's crying out in this way of remember me. Remember me when you're restored to your office. Remember me. It, it's not far off from saying, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your office. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the cupbearer forgets. He just forgets. He doesn't remember Joseph. Doesn't remember Joseph one bit. 
It's so bad. I'm not going to keep talking about it. I just want to say uh, the first part of 40... Um, Copard did not remember Joseph, but he forgot him. And after two, the end of two years, Pharaoh dreamed. So he not only didn't remember him, he forgot. And Joseph is in prison another two years. The cupbearer turns out to be a bad savior. But there is a savior who remembers Joseph. The Lord does remember Joseph. He's there um, all because uh, Yahweh loves Judah. The seed needs to be born. And why is, why is it that Jesus goes through suffering? Because the Lord loves you. And Jesus is the type of Savior. Um, now we're going to make the cupbearer the, the type of Christ here. But he's, he's false because that he, Joseph has put his trust in the wrong Savior. In the, with the true Savior, uh, when you pray, remember me when you come into your kingdom, uh, the true Savior says, today you'll be with me in paradise. He says it to thieves. He says it to, to prisoners, to those condemned to die. Jesus, the, the one who is hanged on a tree, says remembers you in his kingdom, and he'll never leave you or forsake you. Even if you're in a pit like Joseph, the Lord remembers. The Lord always knows who are his. Um, we bear his name. He can't not. He can't lose us. We we got his name. Um, he'll he'll keep us wherever we go. And it happened. Oh, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile. And behold, there came up. Out of the Nile, seven cows, beautiful in appearance and um, with lots of meat on them. And they fed on the grass. They looked good and they had lots of meat on them. They were fat. They were plump. Mm. Sounds good. Like good eating. And behold, seven other cows came up after them from the from the Nile, um, they were ooh, ugly or evil in appearance. Um, they were bad, and um, they were th they didn't have much meat on them. They were um, thin. They were a little bit bony, and they stood um, by the other cows at the bank of the Nile. And the ugly, thin cows ate up the seven attractive, plump cows. And Pharaoh woke up. And he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven ears, thin and blighted by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plump, full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Um... So this one, this is a fun little aside. And behold, it was a dream. So um, this lets you know how vivid Pharaoh's dream was. Because, you know, I've had those dreams too. When you wake up and you're like, oh, no, it was just a dream. Oh, it's just a dream. That's, that's sort of the kind of nightmare Pharaoh is having. And so in the morning, uh, his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men. And, he recount and Pharaoh recounted to them his dream, um, but there was no uh, no one who could interpret it or interpret them to Pharaoh. So gathers everybody, and nobody can tell him what these dreams meant. Um, and the chief cupbearer says to Pharaoh, "I remember my sin today." Um, when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me at, and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, we dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation, each man according to his dream. And as he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. 
Okay, that's just laying it all out. Um, so here, uh, here we see this sort of aspect that Joseph is a prophet. And um, huh, since we know the end of the story, we see that this is true even when it comes to um, the dreams that he had back with his family. The dreams of the, the sheaves of wheat and the sun, moon, and stars. Um, Joseph, um, his dreams are always pointing forward. Um, he's prophet. And um, Joseph even mentions this, or it's uh, it's recorded for us later on when, when his brothers come, that Joseph remembers the dream. He's like, oh yeah, hey, look at this. It's just like I dreamed it. Um, and so here Joseph is a prophet. Um, the suffering prophet is Joseph. Um, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they hurried him out from from the pit and when he had shaved himself and clothed and changed his clothes he came in before pharaoh because he yeah got to clean him up you don't want uh um so um So here we've got um, lots happening. And um, so we've got Joseph in prison. Um, and now we've got Joseph coming out of prison. And he's been in prison for a long time. A long time. Because that's what we're told. He was in prison for a while. And then it was... Uh, the chief baker and the chief cupbearer come in and then it's a whole other two more years before he's brought out so he has been stolen away from his people and uh, then he is uh, a slave we're not really told how long he's a slave um, but then he's you know that's not any fun I mean as much as he's blessed um, there's no way it's funny he'd rather be with he'd rather be home bugging his brothers and um, then he uh, here we are and he's before Pharaoh he's been brought down to Egypt and so Pharaoh um, lays out these dreams so it's very repetitive um, and this is just this is a very Moses style is to um is to sort of lay out something and then lay it out again um and lay it and lay it out a third time right so he, he all this could have been summarized um but we saw this oh when abraham sent eleazar to find um Maybe it wasn't Eliezer. Was it the? Was it named anyway? The servant to get um, Rebecca for Isaac. So we had the the account of um, what happened, and then it was the account of um, him telling it to Rebecca, and then him telling it again to Laban. So three times, and here it is again laid out three times. Pharaoh has a dream. Um, then he's going to tell it to Joseph, and then Joseph will recount it one more time as he's interpreting it. Um, so we don't want Joseph to be stanky before Pharaoh. Um, I've had a dream. There's no one who can interpret it. I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh. Um, it is not uh, me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Or he will um, answer Pharaoh with peace. Um, so he's going to set you at ease. God's the one who is going to set you at ease. So favorable answer isn't, isn't quite right. Um, because even if it were bad news, at least you know. 
So this is Joseph is saying God is the one who's going to get, give you peace about what's going on. You're going to you're going to you're going to be set at ease because you're going to know what's going on. Um. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, "In my dream, I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass." Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cows gave up the first seven plump, ate up the first seven plump cows. But when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as ugly as at the beginning. Then I awoke. All right, so they swallowed them up, um, and then they were they were no different. Couldn't even tell. I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good. Seven ears withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind sprouted after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears, and I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Mm. Yeah, there was no, yeah. There was nobody who could preach it to me. That's the that's the same word. Explain it is actually the the word for um, for preaching, proclamation. Um, so Pharaoh's looking for a preacher, um, and Joseph has already said that this thing is from God, and so um, we always need words from God. Uh, words from God need preachers uh, to preach them to you to to set us at ease. We see that. Look at this. This move of of preaching, it's it's right there. It's all the same. So we have a word come from God, and Joseph is there to be its preacher, um, its interpreter. Um, now this is obviously a little bit different um, for our purposes today um, in our day, because um, when it comes to preaching for us, um, we are just uh, you using scripture to interpret scripture or trying to draw out um, a meaning of a text basically what is this what is this you know like we're doing here some of this is is sort of preaching on a text it's the same word um, it's like this is what it means um, and this is how it points to Christ and this is the echoes and all those other things so uh, Joseph is the preacher to Pharaoh and this is his sermon the seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. And so this might actually be why the, the magicians and the uh, wise men have trouble, is that they're possibly trying to do make them two. And so Joseph here is, is always like, um, this happens with Daniel as well when he has to explain things. Um, it, it goes into, you know, this this very like, obvious answer um, that should have been clear um, but again we'll get to why this is important in just a moment um, uh, the seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years and the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind are also seven years of famine it is as I told Pharaoh God is um, making letting pharaoh see what he's doing yeah god's letting you like he's open he's pulling back the curtain for you pharaoh this is what's coming up um so there will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of egypt but after them there will arise seven years of famine and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of egypt the famine will consume the land um but after them will arise seven years of famine, and uh, wait, famine will consume the land. And the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow, for it will be very, it will be very heavy, very severe. Um, and the doubling of Pharaoh's dreams mean that the thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. Now, therefore, um, so it's a very Hebrew way. God does the doubling of dreams. So, um, uh, you know, we've Pastor Borgard has kind of brought this out from time to time. I probably have too. 
Um, but I remember him doing it when we ran into uh, to Genesis. Uh, not Gen that's where we are. Wow, that's where we are, Pastor Finker. I'm really aware of what's going on today. Woo! Um, Garden of Eden, you will die, die. You will die, die. That's what he tells them, right? And so um, here it's a very like the gods who speak in a very different way. So why would there be this doubling? Because um, that's just how uh, Hebrew works. That's how Yahweh chooses to work uh, in revealing himself to his people, uh, to all people. Um, it intensifies it, the doubling does. Um, and so then, so here we've got the interpretation. And Joseph serves as prophet and preacher, to um, which are really the same thing. So a prophet is going to be a preacher. And so that's why you see that in, oh, Samuel. He's also a judge, but we don't want to get on that. Or Nathan, when it comes to the, the prophet Nathan, who hangs out with David, he shows up and he's a preacher. Prophets don't just... Um, Prophets don't just um, tell the future, though they can. Um, they can also preach a word to the to the present situation. Um, so that's an example of Nathan. You are the man, David. Um, that's a very present thing, and he's still a prophet. When he's doing that, he's being a prophet. Um, so here we get advice now. So what should Pharaoh do? Um, now Pharaoh should... Um, should select a discerning and wise man and send him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint um, appointees over the land and take one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years. So, he's only taken a fifth. So, I mean, these are really going to be good years. So, you're going to have seven good years and you're only taking a fifth. And a fifth of seven years is going to last you complete seven years of famine. So these are really bumper crops for seven years. And let them gather all the food of these good years that are co uh, coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to occur in the land of Egypt, so that the land may not perish through the famine. Makes sense. This proposal, um, this word, I don't know why, why they said this proposal, the word was good in Pharaoh's eyes and in the eyes of all his servants. So the message, good sermon, um, Good, uh, good advice, good thing to say. And Pharaoh said to his servants, um, Can anyone be found like this? A man in whom is the Spirit of God. And so this is, this is where we start seeing um, Pentecost. Um, where uh, on Pentecost we find out um, that uh, from Joel 2 and that in the last days I'll pour my spirit out on all flesh and um, your your men will prophesy your old men will dream dreams um, and so this is so whenever we have a vision in the in the Old Testament that's the work of the spirit and the interpretation also comes from the spirit and so um, here we and this move to Pentecost is that um, Pentecost was um, Pentecost was the harvest festival, where the the Israelites would gather in the grain, and and we celebrate it as you know the gathering of the nations, which is what this was always all about, and we see this in in Egypt is that Joseph, who has the spirit of God, I interprets the these visions. And, and has these dreams about what's to take place. And in so doing, gathering into Egypt many peoples. Gathering into Egypt the chosen people. So it's sort of like this inverse of Pentecost, where instead of drawing the nations into Israel, this is like drawing Israel into the nation so that the nation itself would be preserved. 
This is the Pentecost move to draw into Israel Egypt. We see that that, that somewhat takes place in Exodus, where um, people intermarried with Egyptians. It doesn't work out so well, but um, that was taking place. So the Lord's move is always to bless all nations of the earth with salvation, with the Savior, so that now the preachers of of righteousness will come into Egypt where all the other nations are going to be showing up uh, to look for bread. And in Egypt you find not just the bread um, for physical needs, which is obviously important, uh, but also the bread of the preaching of God's word, the preaching of the promises, which is what um, Jacob and the uh, is doing with his, well, right now 11 sons, because 12th son is in Egypt. Um, but Joseph would have believed this too. And this Jacob then has Judah, and Judah is the bearer of this promise, this seed. These are all wrapped up together. But in this, in this move of, of visions and this spirit gathering in, they're gathering in all this grain, and it's not going to be just for the Egyptians, as we'll see. All nations are coming in to Egypt to eat that bread. And in the same way, we get this picture in Pentecost, in the gathering of the nations um, to, to eat the bread of the scriptures and the, and the true bread of life, which is um, Christ Jesus, in the supper, especially in the supper of his body and blood, where um, his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink, and he will raise us up on the last day. Um, that's John chapter 6. So that's, that's the, the, the inversion here of, of Pentecost and the gathering of the nations here in Joseph. And yet, and here's another way that Joseph kind of foreshadows um, Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus sends out the Spirit to do this. Um, and here Joseph is given the Spirit in order to do this. So we can, oh. Um... There's a, there's a little too much to go in this chapter. Um, so I will read one more verse. Um, you shall be over all my house, and all my people shall order themselves at your command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. So here Joseph is moved from slave, convict, to second in Egypt. Humiliation, exaltation. Um, from being, uh, uh, he, the move is, um, the move is, he comes as servant. The Son of Man came not to serve, but to, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. There he is put into, he becomes prisoner and put into the pit. Uh, that's where Joseph is put. Pit is also another word uh, used in the Old Testament to describe hell. And so that's Christ who descends into hell. And then he is exalted uh, to the throne. Um, second uh, on the throne. Um, now this is different, of course. Can't You can't have a, a complete one-to-one -one when it comes to Joseph and Jesus. Uh, Joseph is... You know, he's second on the throne, so he's below Pharaoh. Uh, but Jesus is, I guess, the greater Joseph. Jesus is seated on the same throne as the Heavenly Father. Because Jesus is not just true man, descendant of uh, Judah, uh, but also true God, um, equal with his father. Um, and so, uh, Joseph here, always keeping an eye out that he is echoing um, Jesus. And we should always do this when we look at whoever is like a prophet or a priest or a king or a leader in some way, or whatever combination those start coming together, they always foreshadow Christ in some way, either positively or negatively. And in this way, Joseph's whole movement of his life is, um, is, an, is foreshadowing the life of Christ and his saving all people in his death and his resurrection. So with that, one final plug for confirmation. Uh, I'll post, there's the link in the 
in the comments. I'll do one more link in the comments. Higherthings.org slash confirmation class to help equip you, uh, pastors, lay teachers, youth, parents, in continuing teaching um, the small catechism and the scriptures uh, in um, through confirmation class in these times where it's you know in person, digital, at home. However, check out the link for more information. Uh, so with that, have a good rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy tomorrow with Pastor Borkhart.